So what Ease Urbana does is we install rainwater harvesting systems. We have the solution of looking up to the sky. It's a very simple and very cost effective, a decentralized source control solution where we're capturing from rooftops and through gutter systems and, and downspouts and a six filter train, we filter it into a cistern and families are able to live six months out of the year My name is Regina Valdez and I'm here at the Water Conference at the United Nations in New York 2023. I'm going to be speaking with Davi Vargas from Mexico City who does a lot of work in terms of helping people, aiding people to secure safe, affordable drinking water. And Davi, how about we start by you sharing a bit about yourself, who you are, who you represent and what it is that you do. Thank you very much. I'm Davi Vargas. I'm president and co-founder of Isla Urbana. Uh, and I'm a Mexican-American, was born in Mexico, grew up in the States, was educated, finished up my master's degree up here, moved back to Mexico 14 years ago to uh, Mexico City, which is a, uh, a city dying of thirst in many ways. There's over 1 million people that don't have access to water and or have some severity of water scarcity issues. For example, in my house, which I live in a nicer part of town and in Mexico City, we have six hours of shortage of the water. City gets shut off for but in in marginalized lower income communities, this problem becomes more severe. This doesn't just go for six hours that what uh, the water gets turned off goes for all day, goes for all week, goes for all months. So people have to buy you can imagine uh, they have to look for other sources and they are either walking for water or in cities, you can, which is a crazy part about it. There are some families that come down in donkeys for water. People are buying water trucks. So you can see a cost of this problem. There's families spend up to 20% of their income because of the water scarcity issues. It transfers into other sectors. Uh, schools, for example, in Mexico, and it's a problem all over the world, but 60% of schools, uh, they have a water scarcity issues. Um, and what's that mean? It means that the directors of schools are closing schools off, school, closing bathrooms, causing sanitation problems. I've seen with my eyes where, where uh, schools come to the kids and the parents bring buckets of water to school in order for them to have water. And so, yeah, so what Isla Urbana does is we install rainwater harvesting systems. We have the solution of looking up to the sky. It's a very simple and very cost effective, a decentralized source control solution where we're capturing from rooftops and through gutter systems and, and downspouts and a six filter train, we filter it into a cistern and families are able to live six months out of the year through our rainwater harvesting systems. And yeah, there's large impacts. You can imagine that going from not having water and having to pay 20% of your income or having to walk for water to all of a sudden having a tank that fills itself. Well, it's simple as simple as that. So in the past 14 years, since 2009, we've been around, we've helped over 33,000 families, 500 schools, and captured about 2 billion liters of water. So you can see that the impact, there can be small decentralized solutions that when it's multiplied to thousands, uh, there's a huge, huge impact. Thank you so much for sharing, Davi. I think what you're doing is so incredibly important. It also brings to mind some questions. Um, Mexico City's very urban, highly developed, um, and uh, incredibly overcrowded. So when you're talking about these uh, rain capturing cisterns, uh, are these things that can be utilized uh, in a multi-family framework, for an example, in high rise, or is it simply for like a single family use? It is designed mostly for single family or generational family. Lots of families buy one home, but then their, their kids start building up. So it could help between five to 10 people. Uh, but when you start looking at high rises, you have such a high demand um, and with little catchment area that it really doesn't work out economically to, to implement it.
It makes sense what you're saying, definitely. I'm curious how it works. When you said it provides water for six months out of year for these families. How long can the water stay within this catchment system, and how do you maintain how do you maintain the water safety? What type of chemicals, for example, do you need to use? Uh, the simple is very simple. Uh, that's why it's so cost efficient. And so we capture from rain rooftops and then we have six different filters, uh, mechanical filters, uh, first flush devices, leaf filters inside the tank. Uh, we don't put any additional filter that needs a change to, you need to change a cartridge. It's all, you give your the maintenance. So, uh, so families don't have an additional cost. Um, and it does provide only six months of water. What, what, what you're doing with the, the system is you're capturing the water and using it capturing and using it you're not storing it for the dry season there's uh it's not helping the full year but but six months of the year is a huge help a huge step i see what you're saying so these families have these systems and this is something that's going to be very helpful for example when you talked about like the six hour shut off time that you were speaking of earlier when various neighborhoods are literally stopped from using water so then this would be the stop gap then in order to supply that water am, am i hearing that correctly yes it's a it's become a new scientific term i, I haven't heard it in this in this coverage but uh in cities when there's a water crisis or when you don't have enough water to for all your citizens and for industry commercial residential the first thing you do is you start cutting off the water so you have to save water and you start cutting off water uh it's called intermittent access it's uh you start cutting off and usually or almost always you cut off lower income um, families and communities because you don't want to make the rich <laughs> and uh, bad. So uh, so you're seeing um, these, these problems of poverty uh, where you already have so, so many issues of without education and health services and now you add water onto it. So it's really, really complicated. It sounds complicated. So you mentioned using this system in schools and you said there was that you have done this with 500 schools. Do you have an idea of how many years of education have been saved by the use of your uh, systems? So we have a beautiful participatory model where we get the schools, not just the kids, but the the, parent, uh, the students and the parents. The parents in schools are very participatory in their kids' education. So we get them involved to form a committee and make sure they give the maintenance to the systems. But it gives us a real opportunity to educate. Now we have eight teachers or workshop givers going throughout schools in Mexico giving uh, workshops. So we're really proud of, of our educational model because it's, it's, these are the seeds that really make a big difference in the future. So. As we've learned in this conference, and as we of course know, it is always the people who have the least who suffer the most. Uh, your system sounds really good. How is it in terms of affordability? Is this something for middle class families or is it something that those with less money would be able to afford? Do you have any programs to help any of those families that may not be able to quite go all in to purchase the system? Yeah, so we've always started, we've always been so, social enterprise. Or we've got a, the nonprofit side where we help the lowest of income communities with a 100% subsidy system. Uh, the systems cost between $1,000 $1, $1, for a home, about $10,000 for a school. Um, but what we've, uh, and very interestingly, we've gotten the government involved in scaling the project. So we've been able to pilot uh, 100 or 200 systems with different foundations or uh, the private sector and grab the attention from the local governments to, to install thousands. It's, so, it's really interesting because the government now is not just seeing like it's an environmental problem or a project. It's, uh, it's really a water infrastructure project we can either the mexico city government is spending in between 10 to 20 million dollars of project of, of rainwater harvesting systems per year um and this last in uh with the current mayor but they could be spending hundreds or <laughs> uh or, or billions of dollars to bring water from a conventional traditional other side of the mountain large pipe solution which is really of the past so they're really looking ahead and and looking at the a new governance or uh looking at these innovative projects as a real solution which is really interesting 
One of the things I'm curious about, as we know, the climate is changing, drier areas are getting drier, wetter areas are getting wetter. <clears throat> Your system, wonderful, relies on rainwater. Have you thought about the future uh, as Mexico tends to get less and less rainfall, what that will mean for people relying on rain catchment systems for their water? So precipitation and in, in talking about climate change, yes, we're getting more severe droughts and more severe rainfall, but the averages go up and down 10 to 20 percent. So rainwater harvesting in Mexico is viable up to 80 percent of the population. 80 percent of the population lives in where it rains and in general civilizations have always lived where there's water, of course. Um, there is a lot of deserts in Mexico, but only 19% 20% of the population lives in that arid lands. Everyone else lives in semi-arid or up to rainforest uh, and jungle uh, tropical weather. And so these variations of 10 to 20%, which will go up or down depending on Mexico, won't make that much of a difference for it not to be a reliable solution. It's actually going to make cities or towns more resilience to future water problems so whenever there is a long drought there's not enough water for everyone if it does rain a little bit a little ho a home will have their own solution and it helps for uh, the every single drop we we capture we save water from uh, the conventional uh, aquifers that were pumping water from the ground or bring them from a different source thank you so much for bringing that up because that also brings a question to mind. And I know that it's probably it's not to the scale where this is applicable, but when we're talking about rain, catching rainwater, it's important because we need water, but also at the same time, the ground needs the water to replenish the groundwater. Is there a tipping point at which there may, may be too much rainwater capture so that it cannot replenish the aquifers of the groundwater? Is this something that you've put into consideration? No, um, it's interesting. That's like an argument of, of the Colorado River. Um, it's illegal in Colorado to to, uh, to catch rainwater because they say you're 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 not allowed to uh, to capture any water in any forms because it's part of the the Colorado River Basin. Uh, and but it's the same concept. If you capture it, you're reusing it, and then it's going back into the 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 drainage of the cities or rural areas um what really needs to be is a, an integral approach of of rainwater management and so that includes rainwater harvesting systems and also water infiltration projects uh so you're making sure that your aquifers are getting uh replenished uh because that is a big issue um with all the stormwater runoff problems in in larger cities yeah, thank you for that. It is so true. Storm water runoff is a problem and a lot of the water when it falls to the ground isn't being filled or draining into the aquifers or filtering into the aquifers. So thank you for bringing that point up. And I'm wondering, what do you see? Mexico City is very interesting because it was at one point it was crisscrossed with rivers and bodies of water and those have since been filled in much as we see here in New York City. What do you see for the future of Mexico City in particular and Mexico in general, or even if you want to look at the region, the Northern Triangle, in terms of water? Do you see it getting worse? Do you see it getting better? What are your thoughts in, in regards to that? Um, I mean, I think the message here at the, at the UN Water Congress has been that there are large and scary problems uh, in this world when it comes to water but in my eyes it's a huge opportunity and i think that for example in mexico's three largest cities so mexico city uh guadalajara monterrey uh they both have had pretty severe water uh crises in the past five years 2018 mexico city 2020 guadalajara 2021 uh, Monterrey and each city has replied in trying to f find innovative uh, solutions like rainwater harvesting we've been able to replicate our project in both cities uh, with 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 the project and and we also have seen them with other initiatives so I really think that um, as water problems become more severe there will be more proposal to help uh, it, to solve them and 
Um, I think that that I'm optimistic. <laughs> I'm a I'm an optimistic person about um, and, and this as a, as a water expert, I think really we can if we work together with all sectors, with the private sector, with the government sector, with entrepreneurs, NGOs um, who are really close to the communities. Uh, I think we can really solve the water issues and and um, and not run out of water in this world. Well, thank you so much, Davi. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you about this important issue. I really, really am so interested about the work you do and the good that you do for the people of Mexico. And I hope that what you do can serve as a vision for many other people and places that need these types of nature-based solutions. So I want to thank you so much for joining us today at the Climate Emergency Forum here at the United Nations Water Conference. And keep on doing the good work that you do. Thank you very much. <laughs>